Now we want to talk about the efficiency of inverters. So, uh, first, what's the efficiency enumerated with this uh, Greek letter eater? That's the power or the energy we get from our system over the power or the energy we put into our system. Um, the efficiency of a solar module. Um, of a PV module heater is the MPP power over the uh, irradiance G times the surface or the area of uh, the module. So that's the irradiance And this is uh, defined at 1000 watts per square meter, so that's uh, defined, or that's the definition of this STC, this standard testing conditions. So the lab conditions, uh, first one is that, uh, is that the irradiance is 1000 watts per square meter, uh, second uh, Issue is that the module temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, and the third uh, standard testing condition is that the air mass is 1.5. So representing the atmosphere that these uh, these three parameters are representing the standard testing conditions. Uh, and the efficiency of a PV module is defined under these uh, uh, conditions. So the irradiance, one kilowatt per square meter, that's the area, and that's the maximum power point, or the power at this maximum power point. And that's the definition of the efficiency of a solar module. The question is now, what is the efficiency of an inverter? Um, so, what is the rate uh, of uh, AC power the inverter generates based on the DC power coming from the PV generators? And, um, yeah, there are no standard testing conditions. So, of course, the definition is still the same. We have the heater of the inverter. That's the power we get from an inverter or the power we put into our inverter so that the ratio of the AC power or the ratio of the DC power. Um, that's the, the problem of the inverter is that this ratio, this uh, efficiency um, depends on several parameters. Uh, the value is not constant, um, so we need to uh, find a different definition. And what we can do is here, let's have a look at this uh, figure. You see uh, the green bars represent the energy yield of a typical uh, PV system. Uh, and this uh, energy yield is separated from zero to 100% of DC power. So one of, let's think about a PV system which has a capacity of 10 kilowatts then 100% DC power would mean that the system is operating at 10 kilowatt uh, peak. 50% uh, means just running with one half of the maximum capacity, just 50%, and so on. And the green bars here represent the frequency. So how often does this occur? And you see, um, on the one hand, of course, this smaller values occur more often. In Central Europe, we'll focus on uh, locations in Central Europe or Northern America, for example. Um, they occur more often because this range here is represented by small uh, radiation values. But of course, the uh, energy yield is smaller. Um, on the other hand, on the right hand side, large DC power values, on the one hand, they are occurring 
uh, rare uh, in Central Europe. We don't have uh, so much time intervals of um, gradients of, let's say, 1000 watts per square meter, just a perfect clear sky day conditions. Um, so it's occurring rather rare, but the energy within this time is very large. And this green bars, they represent now uh, the frequency of the energy yield produced in this range of small DC power, 10, 20, 30 kilowatt, uh, 10, 20, and 30 percent, correlating more or less with the uh, irradiance of 100, 200, and 300 watts per square meter. And on the other end, of course, this range of high power values, large power values, 80, 90, 100 percent, corresponding to uh, the volumes of 800 up to 1000 watts per square meter uh, radiation or irradiance uh, that's occurring less often but high energy yield and the multiplication gives a higher frequency and you see here the green bars you see it's more or less yes equally distributed on the other hand this blue curve here that represents the efficiency of inverter um, depending on the DC power. So what you see is in this range of small volumes, um, the efficiency is rather small. Here, for example, with a 5% DC power, the efficiency is just at, uh, let's say, 94.45, 95 95%, so rather small. Then the efficiency is increasing to a higher value. You see the maximum is close to the DC power of 30 to 40%. And then slightly drops uh, until 100% uh, DC power. And now what we need to do is we need to define a weighted average over this blue curve that we just get one efficiency value which represents the mean efficiency of inverter in the location uh, or in the location in, in Central Europe. So what we will do is now um, we will name these representative uh, dots. This here, the efficiency that's at 5%, with here an efficiency value of 10%, efficiency at 20%, DC power, 30%, to 50%, and to 100%. And now what we would want to get is we want to get a mean or weighted average for our efficiency, so that's the weighted average. Um, that this value correlates to the frequency of the energy yield. Uh, and what we do is, for example, so we have our values e to 5% plus e to 10% plus Eater 20% plus Eater at 30% plus Eater at 50% plus weighting factor for 100%. And now what we need is we need weighting factors which correlate to this distribution of this energy here, so the frequency. Um, and what has been defined uh, is uh, that this is 0.03 times uh, e to 5%, then we have 0.06 times e to 10%, we have 0.13 times e to 20%, 0.10 e to 30%, then 0.48 times e to 50%, and 0.2 times e to 100 percent. So, and these factors here weight our efficiency at 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, and 100 percent, that we get a weighted average or called the euro efficiency. of our inverter. So that is a value which represents the mean 
efficiency over one year of operation, uh, as these green bars represent the yield distribution over one year in Central Europe, and that's the reason why we call it the euro efficiency, because that's uh, valid for inverters uh, installed in Central Europe, in Germany, France, uh, also the northern part of, of uh, the United States and northern part of China. Um, very well. The problem is that this value does not uh, correspond very well with uh, the situation in other locations. So this weighted average does not fit uh, to locations uh, closer to the equator, like in California or Texas or the other part of Spain or Italy, northern uh, Africa. So there's a different definition or a second definition of an efficiency value. This one is, can also uh, always be found on the data sheets of an, an inverter um, as the representative efficiency for this inverter. Uh, but there's often given a second efficiency for uh, Thousand uh, locations. So there's a different definition uh, of the California Energy Commission. So that's the uh, CEC efficiency. So that's the California Energy Commission. Um, why? Uh, if we just make a quick sketch of this figure we see above. Um, the distribution of these uh, green bars you can see here um, is, is different. That's the situation, as I said, in Central Europe. Uh, so the frequency and the energy yield correlates that the frequency is rather constant. For a location closer to the equator, that looks uh, slightly different because in, in this case, uh, if we have this... Uh, our DC power, what do we get is we get something like, like this with these bars, that these bars are increasing with, uh, uh, with the frequency, so that the higher the power is, of course that's not a perfect diagram, but it's more or less uh, in this manner that the frequency of the energy yield energy yield is increasing with the DC power. Uh, so this equation you can see here at the top does not fit. So these weighting values do not fit. So what is done for the calculation of the CEC efficiency is that there's a different definition. So let's say eater CEC. On the one hand, the weighting factors are different, 0.0. .0 four times, and then there are six different uh, representative points, so e to 10%, then we take 0 0.05 times e to at 20% plus 0 0.12 times e to at 3% plus 0 0.21 times e to the efficiency at 50% DC power, Plus, there's a new uh, value 0.53 times e to at 75% of DC power plus uh, 0.05 times e to at 100%. So that's the equation for the uh, for the location in California or Texas. Northern Africa, for example. So you see we have uh, six, well, we have different parameters, different weighting factors, and then of course we get a slightly different efficiency of, a, uh, of the inverter um, to estimate what is the outcome of uh, this PV system. And finally, what you have to keep in mind is that um, also the voltage of the inverter, so the DC voltage, uh, has an influence on the efficiency. So if we have a look at this in this diagram here, um, 
you see uh, three slope of curves. Uh, so again, the DC power on the x-axis, the efficiency of the inverter on the y-axis. And you see now there are three curves depending on the DC voltage, so the voltage of our uh, PV generator. And you see the highest efficiency is achieved at 550 volts. Uh, if the DC voltage um, is 550 volts, then we have to get a higher efficiency. If the voltage is increasing on the one hand up to 800 volts, you see this slight decrease of efficiency. Uh, it might be 0.2, 0.3%. So if the length of your uh, module strength is uh, larger, you have more modules connected uh, in, in series, then the voltage is increasing. And uh, this might lead to a slight drop of the efficiency. On the other hand, if the length of your strings is smaller, you just get an efficient uh, DC voltage of about 340 volts, so just rather short strings. Uh, again, the efficiency is getting smaller. So in this case, if you want to set up a new PV system, you can optimize the efficiency of your whole system by taking into account that the efficiency of the inverter depends on the DC voltage and so on the length of your uh, module strings.